Good morning, everyone. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. It's good to see everybody this morning. All right, I know I have some announcements that are not on the thing here, so I want to make sure. Okay, I'm just making sure I see a note here. I've got to read the note. Mm -hmm. Okay, after the baby dedication today, everyone is invited to Worcester Hall after worship for refreshments in honor of the baby dedication. Oh, yep. See, I had to read that because if I didn't read it, I wouldn't have known. So, good. All right. Thank you for coming and we're going to go straight into our announcements. Okay, today, youth group is on, but we're not staying here. We're leaving at 2 p.m. right from the church parking lot to Seaforth. Is it Seaforth or Seaforth? Seaforth. Don't listen to me. Seaforth's corn maze, right? It costs 10 bucks and we're all going to get lost together. <laughs> Don't worry. Pastor will pray our way out of it. <laughs> Don't worry. I'll be walking with a GPS. <laughs> but we'll be having fun today. So get here so we can leave at 2 p.m. All right? Order your poinsettias, right? You know it's Christmas time and you know we always have the poinsettias out. $10 each. Order forms are on the greeters table downstairs. Please make sure you do your order before November the 6th or by November the 6th, the latest, right? Make sure you get that. Details are in the bulletin if you need more information. All right. Stuffed Animal Drive. We're going to be having a collection of teddy bears, any bears, whatever bears. <laughs> It's a stuffed animal drive. You'll see a big box downstairs, right? The collection date is now all the way until the 27th of November. See bulletins for details, all right? Make sure you are, you are helping in that regard. Chicken pot pie is coming up, right? And this is Saturday, November the 5th, right around the corner. If you don't know, November is around the corner. So make sure you get here. It's by donation. Eat as much as you want. But put a donation in the box too. <laughs> so we'll be having chicken pot pie, pepper cabbage, red beets, dessert and coffee. And it's all over by Worcester Hall, cafeteria style. 4 p.m. until sold out. And those who are giving donations for cakes, Please sign up on the sign-up sheet posted downstairs. All right. All Saints Day is coming up. And this is on Sunday, November the 6th. See the listing of those who have passed on. It's in the bulletin, right? So you can look at it and you can see if your loved one is in there or not. If you would like to add someone to the name, please contact the church office. Don't ask me. <laughs> I will forget and then you're going to get upset with me. So I'm sorry from now. <laughs> For those who are going to ask me, call Lynette. She's the one that makes the slide up. Pastor will forget. I'm, I'm putting it out there. All right. Join us for a hayride. I've been getting a lot of people asking about the hayride. This is happening Saturday, November the 12th, right? Now, we'll be having food from 4 p.m., so I'll be here from 3.30, <laughs> right? Food from 4 p.m., hayride starts at 5 p.m. All are welcome. It's free, 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 <laughs> right? Now, if you want, you can bring some stuff. There will be hot dogs. There will be soup. Hot chocolate is provided. Bring finger food to share. And you know, pastor has many fingers, so <laughs> bring finger food to share. Sign-up sheet is downstairs on the bulletin board. Or you can call the church office and tell them what you're bringing, and Lynette will write it in for you. Okay? All right. Our veteran program is coming up, and this is happening on November the 13th, 9 a.m. It takes place in our Sunday school hour. And it's right downstairs in the adult Sunday school room by the coffee shop, right? 
This year, our speaker will be retired Army veteran Andy Niebauer, right? So please join us for this wonderful day so we can hear some of the stories of Andy being in charge. <laughs> All right. Tall Park in Trinity Red Rose Craft Show. We are having all sort of stuff happening. Now, this craft show, let me take a little second here, was an idea of one of our youngsters. This is one of our youth. She put this all together, got help, and this is her idea to have young vendors and all these little ones who do craft, and old vendors too. <laughs> But to have a time where we can use over Worcester Hall, sell their little items, you're going to see other things over there for sale. But this is in aid of the mission strip. Yeah, so you think these youth are not thinking. So please be in support of this Red Rose Craft Show, right? Saturday, November the 19th, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Worcester Hall, Vendors and Kids Corner. I didn't even know there was a kid's corner. Make sure you are there. All right. Candy donations needed for Meyerstone Holiday Parade. Right? That is coming up. Thanksgiving is around the corner, and so the parade is around the corner. The container is downstairs in the coffee shop. Start bringing your candy. Okay. Donations for the playground. We're still going to see it coming up every now and then in the... Um, announcements the box is right outside the door there put in your little five dollars your little ten dollars your fifty twenty hundreds <laughs> as we save towards getting new playground equipment for our kids right oh, wonderful <laughs> all right i think this is not mine this is dogs that's you i can do that no that's your slide come on up here <laughs> <laughs> I just don't look like dog. <laughs> He's coming. Yep, he got it. Yeah, it's you. <laughs> I just put a slide up there to remember that you're coming out. Well, no, this one right here. Right? There you go. No, nope, in the middle. Okay. There you go. <laughs> You're very fortunate because I'm losing my voice. Oh. <laughs> you can read that. It was an amazing day. Um, we were blessed to have the most beautiful day we could add weather-wise, and everybody loved it. I mean, we were complete strangers here that just, they loved how friendly you all were. And the food was great. They loved our location. Uh, everybody that, not the car show committee at this time, but everybody who came out and volunteered, church tours, in the kitchen, registration, everybody else, just, just stand up if you would. I know there's some of you here. <laughs> I mean, I was so amazed at the people that came out from the church for this event. It, it was amazing. Now, if I could have the people that are here from the car show committee, I know they're not all here, but if you people could just stand up. There's more that aren't here today, but these people have been working on this car show since last May, and we, we've been working on it, trust me. Now, for the good news, it was well worth it. We grossed over $12,000 that day. <laughs> so we had a profit of $9,600, which is absolutely amazing. Now with that profit, Gary and Nancy's motorcycle club, Christian motorcycle club that came out again this year, helped with traffic and helped park cars. They support a mission of Run with the Sun. Yep, run with the sun. And they, they provide uh, transportation for pastors and hundreds that they donate to get around. Right. So we gave them, right out of that top of that $9,600, we gave them a, a donation to that organization. 
And then we also, we went to Lynette, the church secretary, so much. I mean, she printed up all our flyers and we handed out probably somewhere around 900 flyers over the course of that from May till a week before the car show. Uh, and we bought everybody that was helping volunteers in the car show staff. We, we purchased t-shirts with Trinity Red Rose car show in the back. And we also were selling shirts. So we're probably going to be turning over money somewhere between $8,500 and $9,000 to general maintenance to this church. So. And in case you weren't here, we're doing it again next year. <laughs> so we picked a date, and I also, I got to recognize one person. My wife, who put up with me since May, because I was, I was on my phone so much in those six months, texting or taking calls or just working on this car show, and she put up a lot. And she said, if I do this again, she's going <laughs> to... You can figure that one out. <laughs> so, Teresa, thank you very much. Thank you very much for everybody's support. Thank you very much. Amen. So, someone said Teresa has been putting up with him for much longer. <laughs> All right, great. This is awesome. It is nothing more need to be said. All right, I got a little, um, try to turn things around this morning a little bit. Let me see. All right, um, I'm not good with change immediately, quickly like that. <laughs> Yeah, people would understand how difficult it is to just, when you just change things. Okay, so at this time, we are going to have our pray load right now. Switching things around a bit. <laughs> and I know you're going to find this funny, but you won't find it until I'm preaching. <laughs> You'll know why. <laughs> but we're going to change around something that is on the program because the kids are supposed to go for their play rehearsal. But most of the Sunday school teachers will be over there with them while they're doing that. So we're going to have the Sunday school book dedication happening right now. Sorry, Marie. <laughs> Put you on the spot. Okay, as no. Okay, as most of you know, uh, I'm Marie Troutman, and I'm your church librarian, and I'm happy to be up here. I have two reasons. Most of, mostly, it's. Um, to honor our Sunday school teachers, but I have one quick thing. I want to give a little plug to the library. I wish more of you would take advantage of the wonderful library that we have. We have great books in there, and I can't take the credit for that. You people give a lot of donations, and we put them in the library if they're appropriate. So I would love to see more of your faces in the library, and uh, children, too. A few years ago, we used to have you know, families, the children came in every week or every other week and they sign out books 
and uh, would bring them back in the next week or two. We don't have a um, special sign-out time. We'd like them to come back in a timely fashion, but there's no, no fines, no nothing. We're very easy, so please um, consider using our library, okay? Now, the other reason I'm up here is to honor our Sunday school teachers. Uh, so as I call your name, would you come up front and line up in front of the railing and look out at the congregation? Uh, Karen Schnook, Misty Long, Tracy Scipiani, Taryn Showalter, uh, Amy Manbeck, Linda Saul, Casey Troutman, uh, Michaela Madden, Gary Ewer, and Jonathan, Jonathan Bickle. Uh, I hope I didn't miss anybody. If I did it and you're a teacher, come on up anyway. <laughs> I don't believe John is here this morning. Okay, so we just want to thank all of you for all the time and the work that you put in for our children and our adults. We are so fortunate here at Tulpahawken to still have a Sunday school. A lot of our local churches no longer have a Sunday school. We have kids and we always seem to come up with people who step up and, and um, take charge of our Sunday school. So uh, we just appreciate you very much and so we want to give all of you a hand and a thank you, a big thank you. Okay, so we usually start off with Karen, with the younger ones. Karen has been up here. Some of these people have been up here 20 years as long as we're doing. I think Ruthie Wolf started this years ago, and I think I've been doing it at least 20 years. Time flies. I don't know where it went, but anyway. So for Karen's class, Karen has charge of the, of the, the birth to kindergarten, uh, along with Misty. Misty's not here this morning either. Okay, but Misty's a new person who took over. So. Uh, this is for Karen's class. It's called You Can Shine So Bright, uh, and it's um, actually a book on the fruits of the spirit. It has wonderful colored pictures of the way children should act and following all the, the parts of the, the uh, fruits of the spirit. Love, patience, kindness, goodness, all those, all those good things. So that's for your class. And then for, for Misty, also in that class, this is the ark that Noah built. We had a couple Noah books before, but I just thought this one was too cute, you know, not to, not to buy. So it, it just shows, shows, the, shows the animals that's actually leaving, I guess. But it's very, very cute, colorful pictures of, of Noah. Okay? So for uh, Tracy and, and Taryn, they have grades 1 to 5. So I have a, a set of books. They were, they were by the same author, but I thought they were so cute. This is the fantastic feast, and it's the story of the, the man who's, who invited people to come to his house for dinner, and they couldn't come, so they drug in people off the street and invited everybody. So that was the, the fantastic feast, and that's for, for Tracy. I think I have Tracy's name, yeah. When, when we put, what we do is we, we put a book in the library in, in their honor, and we put a book plate in the front. So that's how we honor our teachers these days. And then the other one is for uh, Taryn Showalter. This is one sheep short. So of course that's the story of the lost sheep in, a, in parable form. I thought they were very cute. Uh, for Amy Manbeck, she has grades six to nine. She's one of our new volunteers. Thank you, Amy. Uh, <laughs> this is uh, 40 answers for teens' top questions and it's got all kinds of questions that Kids might ask, like, first of all, why should I read this book? <laughs> why, do, why do I have zits? <laughs> you know, things, things like that. <laughs> so, it, I mean, it's hard to get that age kids into the library to read, but this would be good if, if any of them would come in and just look it over. Okay. Then, for our uh, substitutes, Casey Troutman is one of those. I think she's new on this team also. Thank you. Um, along with Linda Saul. Um, I have one book for, for the substitutes. It's called The Lantern Hill Light Parade. And it's, um, it reminded me of years ago, the, the uh, playgrounds in Berks County used to have a parade at the end of the season. Well, this is kind of like that. It's at the end of, they have a fall celebration and they have lantern lights. So that's for the substitutes. Uh, now for Michaela, 
Michaela is our program coordinator, fancy name for her. She writes our, our, our stories and things for the, for the Christmas and, and Easter plays. So uh, for her, I actually have a book about two kids that decided they're going to have a play. And all these kids came up and wanted to help, and some couldn't see well, some couldn't walk well, but they included everybody. So this is called Everybody Belongs. I thought that was appropriate since she does programs. Okay, then we have our adults. We have Gary. Uh, I have uh, Resilient. It's by John Eldridge. Restoring your weary soul in these turbulent times. I don't know if you have a weary soul. <laughs> it might not have been your best year, Gary, <laughs> health-wise, but we're glad to have you back teaching, and uh, you've been doing this for a number of years, so thank you. And uh, the other adult teacher is, uh, they're, they're taking turns right now. We used to have two separate classes, but right now it's one class and they alternate. I don't know, is it every month or I'm not sure how you do it. Whenever you can be here, right? One of you is, al one of you is always here. So this one is for Jonathan Bickle. It's called Kidnapped in Haiti. It's the amazing story of 17 missionaries that were kidnapped, and they were eventually freed, but I got it for Jonathan. He's, he's kind of a world traveler. I don't know if he's been in Haiti, but he's, he's uh, been all around. So those are the books we got. <clears throat> we'll be adding to the library. <clears throat> it's really the way that we, we get most of our books. When we do this every year, we get new books. I hardly buy books during the year unless there's something suggested that we really should have. So if, if any of you have ideas or suggestions, please see me or someone else on the discipleship committee. Uh, and again, we just want to thank all these wonderful volunteers we have. Thank you for coming up. Don't leave yet. <laughs> I always pray for my Sunday school teachers, because these are my arms and legs. <laughs> so let us pray. God, we thank you for allowing these individuals, dear God, to take the time out just to volunteer to do your work, dear God. We're thankful that we have what is called a Sunday school. In most churches, it is obsolete, but in a time like this, it needs to be happening. So, dear God, we give you thanks for this blessing. We give you thanks for these individuals. Continue to touch them, use them as they impart knowledge of your word to the youngest of minds all the way up to the eldest of ages. We're thankful and we give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. All righty. Oh, I left my stuff. All right. Now, kids. <laughs> You can be dismissed for your play rehearsal. You will see our kids going out. Um, don't worry. We only kidnapped them for an hour. <laughs> and they'll be working on the Christmas play and all the different stuff. And, you know, it takes time. So it's easier to get them when they're here. So when you see our kids going out, don't worry. All the teachers are going with them and they'll be having a wonderful time. So church might look a little bit empty, but we're still here. All right, at this time, we are going to go into our time of prayer. We want to remember those who are on the prayer list, right? Continue to keep in prayer, Larry Conti. That's um, Tim's brother-in-law. Keep him in prayer. Linda Fieser, Dave Grob, Vicky Kleinfelter, Rob Leonard. I see Evie here. Amen. Amen. That is great. I love when people are in the hospital and then when they come out, they find their way back to the house of God. <laughs> That's great. Amen. So we're thankful for her being here. Continue to pray for her and her strength. Continue to pray for Gladys Olinger, George and Janet Seibert, right? Shirley Weidman, keep her in prayer. Wendy Wolf. Now, I got some communication from Wendy Wolf. The cancer um, surgery, everything went well, right? So we've been praying for her for a long time. And uh, the treatment for the cancer is going well. They only found one more spot that they're going to check out, but everything seems to be going well. And she's been off from work for such a long time, but they're telling her now, 
she's looking good to go back to work. So we give God praise for that. All right, for your friend in Norway that has the brain cancer, right? So we don't want to forget all these different prayers and don't forget what is happening. So just keep that in communication, um, in prayer, because with Wendy Wolf, she, was, it, she thought she would have lost her job. But her employer said no, and he held the job for her. And he's telling her when she comes back, she has a job. So we give God praise for that. That is something we don't... In these times where if you miss one day from work, somebody else is in your position, but he's holding the job for her. We also want to keep in prayer Roseanne Meredith. She had a spell this week, and they had to medivac her back to the hospital. But I spoke to her this morning, and she says she's home now, keep her in prayer her pressure was not staying where it should be and it was critical but they got it under control now so keep her in prayer keep her husband in prayer also we want to keep in prayer bill you know bill is sitting right usually over there <laughs> you mess with the pastor <laughs> bill hold your hand up again some people don't know who bill is he's quiet everybody knows his wife donna <laughs> i'm not saying you talk a lot donna <laughs> But keep Bill in prayer. His father just passed away, and it wasn't expected. You know, he tripped, fell, hit his head, and that was it. So it's unexpected. He just turned 90, I hear. Right? So keep him, keep Bill and the family in prayer. Right? Because this is, you know, totally unexpected. Right? So we want to remember all these people in prayer right now. And of course, your friend in Norway, we want to keep everybody in prayer. Will you stand with me, please, as we look to the Lord in prayer? Let us pray. God, we are truly thankful for this Sunday that we can be in your house once more. We started by changing things around. But one thing we know for sure is that you are a God that answers prayer and you can change things around. So for that, we give you thanks. Dear God, there are so many things happening all around us, dear God. We, we think of the person now in Norway, dear God, with the brain tumor, dear God. We, we know and understand that you're a God that can heal, you're a God that can deliver, and no matter where the person is in this world, we can pray and you can heal because your prayer moves mountains. Your prayer goes all the way over to different countries and for that we give you thanks. We pray especially right now, dear God, for all those who are on this prayer list, dear God. We think of Bill and the family right now, dear God, with this taste in his mouth, dear God, of losing his father, dear God, so unexpectedly. We pray, dear God, for his strength right now and for the rest of his family at this point in time, dear God. I pray now, dear God, that you just surround him with your love, dear God. Help us as individuals, as church family members to... Give him a hug, give him a call, dear God. Text him to let him know that we care. We pray, dear God, for all the different persons who are going through these different circumstances, dear God. Some people right now are still in the midst of their battle, but we pray for them right now, dear God, for healing, dear God, because you are a God that does more than we can even think, ask, or imagine. We want to give you praise, dear God, for what is happening in the lives of our believers. Roseanne, dear God, it could have been different this morning, but you brought her back home, dear God, and soon you'll bring her back here to worship with us, just like how you brought Evie here with us. So we're thankful for what you're doing in the lives of our believers, dear God, and for the good report about Wendy and all the other persons that are on this list who are having good report. We give you praise because you are worthy. We pray now for the rest of this service, Whatever we say and do, dear God, that you may get the honor, the glory, and the praise in whatever we say and do. We thank you for being our Lord and Savior. We thank you for this day that we can worship you freely. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. At this time, we are going to have praise and worship.
explicit. When I, when I sing that song, I get excited. But can you imagine if God ever show us his glory? <laughs> I mean, his presence has come down several times, you know, and the Spirit of God walks through the church. But remember when he showed Moses his glory? Some of you might not know that scripture. But in the Old Testament, those are Moses' exact words. I want to see your glory. Show me your glory. And God says, if you see my glory, you're going to die. <laughs> you can't see my face and live. But I'm going to pass by. I'm going to take my hand and put you in the cleft of the rock. And when you go by there and I pass by, I'm going to lift my hand up and you're going to see the back part of me. Right? And so God did that. When he was passing by, he put Moses in the rock, covered him with his hand, and then when he passed by, Moses saw the back part of his glory. When Moses came down from that mountain, everybody was like, Wow, dude! And Moses was like, What? They had to put a cloak over him. Because he saw the back part of God's glory, he lit up like a neon bulb. <laughs> That's a beautiful scripture. Go and read it and see. So when we are asking for the glory of God, wow. That is why when he comes back for us, we can't have this body. Because this body cannot see his glory and survive. That's why the scripture says we'll have a changed body in the twinkling of an eye. Some of you don't even know what's happening. <laughs> Think on those things. Anyway, <laughs> we are going to move on. I just had to share that. Yeah, that's not the message for today. <laughs> Just had to share that. Songs can inspire us. At this time, we are going to have the baby dedication of Ismani Marie Ruiz. Did I get it right? Whew. <laughs> Daughter of Desiree Rodriguez and Manuel Ruiz Colon. <laughs> See, I got that one. <laughs> right? My good friends, that I'm so glad I'm able to do their baby dedication this morning. Now, before I do that, I have a passage of scripture that I want to read. And it's my favorite one that I love to do for baby dedications. And this one is from Psalms 127, reading verses 3 to 5. And it says, Behold, Children are a heritage from the Lord, right? It says a fruit of the womb, a reward. Don't take your children lightly. When you get children, you are blessed. Some people are still trying. Some people have to adopt, right? So when you get the blessings from God to be able to produce a child, be happy about it. Verse 4 says, as arrows are in the hand of a warrior, mm, so are the children of one's youth. You see, some of you don't understand. Well, it's archery season. <laughs> so, some of you don't even know that it's archery season and some people are out hunting. And they have to wait until they get that direct shot and pull the bow back and make sure they're directing it in the path it should go. It's the same thing with children. No direction. If you don't pull back the bow far enough, if you don't bend it, <laughs> come on. The arrow will go all over the place and it won't hit the mark. So as arrows are in the hand of a mighty warrior, so are children of one's youth. Right? And then in verse 5 it says, Happy, blessed, and Fortunate is the man whose quiver is filled with them. There's a bit more, but let me pause right there. What's the quiver? I was so glad to meet Melissa, who knows what a quiver is. <laughs> she explained it to me. The quiver is what we put the arrows in. That's where the arrows go in. To keep them safe, to keep them sharp. Come on now. 
And we have the responsibility of keeping them there. And we should be what? Happy about it. You know how many children here don't have good story about parents? <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So be happy when you get that responsibility. And finally, it says here, they will not put you to shame when they speak with their adversaries in gatherings or in the city gate. When you train up your children in the right way they should go, then they won't embarrass you. Come on now. Come on now. <laughs> right? I've seen a lot of people and they said, Oh my, my child did this and my child did that. And I said, yes, but did you spend time to discipline them? I've heard people say discipline is outdated. I said, on which planet? You know why I am upset when people say discipline is outdated? Because people think discipline is one way. But listen to this. We spend money to send the dogs to discipline school. Come on now. You think I didn't see that? <laughs> but we won't spend time to discipline our children. I'm not telling you to smack them around. Discipline. Guiding them. Taking a time out. All of that is necessary in the growth of a child. Right? So make sure you grow a child in the way that they should go. So when they're old, they won't depart from it. I hear you, my baby. I'm coming to you now. <laughs> She's like, get on with it. <laughs> so at this time, I'm going to invite the family to come forward. Everyone that is here, uncles, cousins, everybody. When Pastor Mario doing dedication, he wants everybody up here. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Come on now. You're going to turn to the crowd. <laughs> my, they know my face, so my back can be to them. <laughs> this is my wonderful family here who will be dedicating. Look at my little baby. She always smiles with me. She's a children. See? She, I love her. <laughs> She's always smiling. Right? Yeah! <laughs> Not making this up. Right? right? She is awesome. And so, this morning, I want to pray for you. I want to anoint you guys with some oil too because you have all have things that you have to do to help in the growth of this little one here. But first, I want to ask the church to stand with me. Right? Because guess what? I want you guys to know you have help. Look out there. That's your support system. Right? So you have help. And so, church... If you are with me this morning to help to see that Ismani grows in the way of the Lord, will you answer by saying, we will? We will. Amen. Please be seated. <laughs> you see that? She's like, I heard you. <laughs> I love her. <laughs> if you put some oil on you this morning, this is, yeah. Pastor anointing you this morning, yeah. <laughs> when you come to this house, you don't leave. You're going to get something else too. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Pastor, want to make sure everybody is in this thing together. This is my other little princess, if you don't know. Wave to them, princess. All right. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> God is good. Amen. And all the time, God is good. See that? See who is up here? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is the backbone. All right? <laughs> so you need to know. This is the replacement for Phoebe. <laughs> so the backbone of the family. Right? I also want to put some water on my little baby here. I want to dedicate you in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I dedicate you you is money yes look at you yeah got some water here from the jordan river <laughs> so you're right up there with jesus <laughs> all right let us look to the lord in prayer god we thank you for this wonderful day where we can bring a little one to you 
when Jesus walked the earth, dear God, and the disciples were turning them away, you said, no, bring the little children to me that I might bless them. And so, dear God, throughout eternity, you have been blessing children, and it is no different today. So we pray for Ismani, dear God. We pray a special covering on her life, dear God. We pray, dear God, that you cover her, that you touch her, that you use her for your work. We pray for the parents, dear God. We pray for the godparents, the uncles, the aunts, the grandparents, the great-grandparents. We pray for everyone that has their work in this to do. I pray that everyone may understand that we have a responsibility to point her in the direction that she should go. So I pray, dear God, especially for the parents, dear God, use them to bring her up in church. Help Ismani to see them attending church, not sending her to church. So for that, we give you thanks. We pray now that you continue to cover this family, this church family too, as they support them in raising this young one. We thank you and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to lift her up and present her to God. Yes, well, I dedicate you in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, and don't want to leave your... I always forget this. I put it... Ah, here it is. <laughs> here you go. That's your certificate. Thank you. You may be seated. His mind is so wonderful and playful and... <laughs> I love that. All right. At this time, we're going to have a special, and not from me. <laughs> so you can say hallelujah now. <laughs> and this time we're going to ask Lester Ghetto to come, and he'll be singing and playing the lost chord. Screen up so you can hear the majestic top of Hocken pipe organ this morning. His father had just died, and his brother was very sickly. He was just hanging on, and then he also passed away. And this was a beloved brother, so he took it very hard. And it put him more or less in a depression or a depressed state. And he sat at the organ because he was an organist, he was a composer, he was a musician. So he sat at this organ, and he took his hand and went over the keyboard like you see the organist do on the piano or the organ, and he was wondering, how can I find a chord of music that's gonna relieve me and make me feel better? And he thought for a minute, I found it, but he really did. And he said, I realized I did not find what I'm looking for, perfection. And he said, the only place I'm gonna find this is in heaven. Five days after he wrote this selection, The Lost Word, he also died. So it was a great shock for everybody because he was a great musician. So we hope that he found his lost chord in heaven.
one day at the organ, I was weary and ill at ease, and my fingers wandered idly over the noisy keys. I know not what I was playing or was dreaming then, but I struck one chord of music like the sound of a great amen, like the sound of a great amen. They're even saying great job. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I sure am glad I come to a church where we can praise God in so many different ways. Yes. I'm, I love it. You always go to a church and it's fixed in one position. But we hear singing, trumpet, praise music, drums. I love it. Amen. And I'm thankful for it. Because there's going to be a lot of praise in heaven. And I keep telling people, if you don't like praise now, start rehearsing. Because <laughs> you have an eternity of it. <laughs> they better learn to love the harp too. Amen. <laughs> what? Well, Boy's still going to be playing drums in heaven. Right, Boy? <laughs> 
Amen. Thank you for that wonderful rendition there. At this time, we'll go into our morning scripture reading. And our scripture reading this morning, oh, see, Pastor didn't remember the screen was up. Thank you, Jen. <laughs> I got to love when Jen is there. She keeps me in check. <laughs> right? So we're waiting for the screen to come down. Here we go. All right. Wonderful. Our scripture reading this morning is taken from Isaiah 43, reading verse 18 through to 19. We'll read it all together. I'll ask everyone to stand in reverence to the word of God. And we'll start after three. One, two, three. Do not remember the former things or ponder the things of the past. Listen carefully. I am about to do a new thing. Now will it spring forth? Will you not be aware of it? I will even put a road in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. Amen. Let us pray. God, we thank you for your word, that we could read it, dear God, and that it's here, that we can study it, that we can preach it freely. I pray now, dear God, that you might just hide me behind the cross, speak through me in spite of me and regardless of me. Let Mario be in the back, dear God, and that you may be magnified as you use me now to speak only that which you would have me to say. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Please be seated. One of the worst things in this world <laughs> is when you are going somewhere and you get stuck. I don't know about you. And what do, you, you ever realize cars break down at the worst time? <laughs> it's when you're on your way to somewhere. Why didn't the car tell us when it was parking that night? I'm not going to work tomorrow. <laughs> The car waits until we're going, then it goes and stops, right? So you're on your way somewhere and you get stuck along the way. You can't move forward. You can't go backward because when you're stuck, you're stationary, right? And many times in lives, as believers in our spiritual lives, we get stuck spiritually. I, I must confess, I feel like preaching this morning again, so be prepared. <laughs> Some people get unstuck, thank God for that, they get moving, while some people, they still remain stuck in the same position. They're like that sheep in the picture there. <laughs> How can God effectively use us if we are stuck? in the same position and not growing spiritually. So this morning, I want to talk to us on the topic, don't get stuck. See that sheep? Shouldn't have pushed his head through there. Reminded me, I did the very same thing when I was little. <laughs> in the grill work at the home, I pushed my head through and couldn't get it back out. That's why it's shaped this way. <laughs> but don't get stuck. And the first thing I want to look at this morning is don't get stuck because of hurt. Mm, am I speaking to people this morning? Now listen to me carefully. I am not downplaying your hurt or even your church hurt. I'm not downplaying it. It is real. You got hurt. Someone offended you. Now taking time to heal from your hurt is not being stuck. I just want you to understand that. Taking time to heal is preparing to move on. Did you know that? Sometimes when people hurt you, you have to take some time out. Because if you don't take some time out, you might take some time in. <laughs> so you take some time out to get things back on track. Someone who is really stuck in hurt they're not healing. They do not move on. And they keep the hurt at the forefront of their minds and their lives. Right? And so they're in the same position. I have spoken to many people. And when I have talked to them, right, they said to me, I was hurt by someone. And so 
I stop going to that church. You've heard that in conversations before. I don't go there anymore because I was hurt. And then when I keep the conversation going, I tend to find out it happened many years ago. When you start talking to them, you thought it was something that happened last week. <laughs> I don't go back to Tulpa Hawking anymore, right? And so when you talk to them, you realize it's something that happened many years ago. They say, I don't go back to Tulpa Hawking because Pastor Mario said this, or Pastor Mario did this. And you were like, wow, I didn't know Pastor Mario was like that. When did this happen? Oh, in 1992. And you're like, what? Yeah, in 1992, when I came through the church doors, he said this and he said that. It's 2022, 30 years later, and you still have not grown from that experience. You see, Pastor Mario might have offended you, but as a child of God, you should have prayed for him, <laughs> you should have forgiven him, and you should have moved on. Now, this is the thing. You might move on and go to another church. There's nothing wrong with that. But sometimes, some of us need to move on right where we're at. So that means we need to come to the church that we had the problem with. Say, Pastor, you did this. And fix it so you can move on right in the very church that you're working in and serving in. Don't get stuck in hurt that you can't move. And then what happens is you continue living in the hurt for the rest of your life. Hurt makes you a bitter person. People don't like to be around bitter people. So stop living in your hurt. Colossians 3 verse 13. Listen to this. Be gentle and forbearing with one another. And if one has a difference, a grievance, or a complaint against another, readily, what? Pardoning each other, even as the Lord has, what? Freely forgiven you, so must you also forgive. Uh-oh. <laughs> you see, this is us. Lord, forgive me. I won't do it again. Lord, forgive me, I won't do it again. Two weeks later, you're doing it again. And then we come back to God. Lord, forgive me. But then Pastor Mario did something and you're like, for life, I will never talk back to him. But you want God to continuously forgive you. Remember that you need to move on in a situation right so in some situations i find church people to hold a grudge should be outside but it's happening in church camera people work with me this morning i'm moving <laughs> i want to give you something so what happens say for instance lester and i had an argument in 2021 and so for whatever reason lester left the church right and so now I seem in Dutch way. This is 2022. I should be able to say, hey, Lester, how you doing? Yeah, and he shakes my hand. How's Grace? Yes, and we talk and we laugh and we have a good time there in Dutch way because that's the past now. And we are forgiven and we have moved on. But this is real church people. I see Lester in Dutch way. And Lester says, hey, Mario. Lester. I'm talking reality. Lester is trying to figure out why is Pastor Mario still upset with me? He didn't even remember what happened a year ago. He could have left the church for a different reason. But because us as church people love to hold on to the grudge, we have now made another brother thinking what is happening in the Christian faith. Stop living in the hurt. Let go of the hurt. Move on, because some people are still living in the hurt, and you get stuck. The second one I want to look at this morning is, don't get stuck because of change. Lord have mercy. <laughs> you see, this morning my wife came up to me, and I'm like, 
What? what? You want me to do what? Change it? <laughs> See, God has a way of showing up people. And he's like, you're preaching about it, so change it around. <laughs> and I had to change stuff around, even though I wasn't sure of what I was getting everything done with. But I did it. Do you know how much people cause problems in church because they won't change? Uh-oh. Uh-oh, pastor talking hard this morning. Listen, they always want things to remain their way. It's my church, and things must not change. This is how I want it. Here's the harsh truth. This is not your house. <laughs> this is God's house. Uh-oh. So guess what? He has the ability to change anything at any time without asking any one of us. I can't go to Nancy's house and say, Nancy, I don't like the couch there. Move it over the other side. <laughs> Nancy's going to say, I don't like you here. Take the door. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't want any change. We want things to remain the same. I want only hymns to be sung. I don't want to hear none of these new praise songs. I don't understand them anyway. <laughs> right? Why do we need a projector? We don't need a projector. Tell the people to get their Bibles out again and start reading the Word of God. No, many of you can't see the Bible in this light. <laughs> That's why we need a projector. So sometimes we need to stop fighting change and move on. The truthful thing is this. Do you know when Jesus walked this earth, he changed temple worship? Come on. I need you to read the life of Jesus. And if you don't read the life of Jesus, my plug in here, go watch The Chosen. Watch it. It will help you get into some of the understanding of the life of Jesus. But listen to this. Throughout the course of time, change has been happening spiritually with worship. What? Let me give you an example. First, you had personal sacrifice. Remember? Adam and Eve and all of those people, they were sacrificing to God. Then you had priestly sacrifice. You bring the sacrifice to the priest and he would pray for you. Then you had the mobile temple. Some of you don't even know that. You think mobile on the phone came from us? No. There was a first mobile church back in the days when there was no cell phone. And they had to pack up the temple and move when God say move. And when God say stop here, they had to pull down and make up the tent and put everything in it to worship. The mobile temple. Then you had temple worship when they made their first building. And that was where everybody went. Then you came Jesus. And Jesus now started to teach about salvation and teach about the church. But guess what? Jesus never started the church. He ascended before the church started. So the change actually happened when the disciples actually started the church. You see, change is always happening. We are humans, and that's what we do. We change. But tell you what doesn't change. The word of God. God himself and his word does not change. If we as a church don't change to meet the needs of our community, we become irrelevant. Uh oh And guess what? An irrelevant church could mean closed doors. I've always said that. Because when we're irrelevant to God, we become useless. The bad thing about this statement is that a lot of churches became irrelevant. And their church doors are now closed. Amen. Thank you, my brother. <laughs> right? And so we need to understand that God will change things around. Some people looking at me like, what? God will change things. I will now prove to you from Scripture that God initiates change because He knows best and He sees the future and knows what is coming. So we should not get stuck. Look at this Scripture right here. Isaiah 43, verses 18 to 19. 
Listen what God said to Isaiah. Do not remember the former things. Uh-uh. Don't remember when we only had 50 people in here. Leave that alone. Things are better now. Or ponder the things of the past. In other words, Lester and I don't have to worry about the argument three years ago. We put it under the blood and we're moving on. Right? So he says, listen carefully. This is God speaking. I'm about to do what? A new thing. Now will it spring forth? It means it's going to pop up. Now listen to this part. Will you not be aware of it? In other words, I'm going to do something new and it's going to spring up. Are you going to miss it? <laughs> I'm going to work something new. Are you going to miss it? You are my people. Are you going to miss it? Listen what he says. I will even put a road in the what? Wilderness. Rivers in the what? Desert. Think about that. In other words, he's going to change things up so much that you are going to be shocked. Don't get stuck in our ways and miss what God is doing in his house with his people. Come on. Instead, let us initiate change. In other words, let, let God use us to initiate change and do what he wants through us. God is working a work, and we should not get stuck because of change. Finally, listen to this one. Uh-oh. Don't get stuck because of pride. Lord have mercy. Let me start hiding. <laughs> listen, pride is something people get stuck on in church. And many times... People leave the church or get chased out of church because of pride. Some people, nobody wants to back down. I am right. And somebody comes with a new idea and we say, okay, we can play it this way. We can do it this way. And Lynn says, no, nah, I've been here 30 years. This is the way it's going to play. And the person, but I can, I can, you know, I can play the praise music. No. And the person, but I this, well, the person leaves and goes, and then you hear that church down the word road using them, and they're having a wonderful praise time. And we're like, why did they leave our church? Pride, right? We chase people out of the house of God because of pride. Is it worth being right while turning people away from God? I've always said it. Many problems in church start because someone's pride was hurt. We already know about how we should fix it. We did that already. So if you get hurt, your pride gets hurt, you still should fix it. We've already dealt with that. Many people don't reconcile situations because of what? Pride. Well, Kelly started it first. I don't care. Go back to her and fix it. And then when Glenn sees me come and fix it with Kelly, he's like, oh, wow. I didn't know he would do that. That way it doesn't go any further because now Glenn sees me and Kelly talking so he's comfortable with me. Come on, don't tell me this don't happen in church. I've been in church all my life. I've seen this thing, right? Too much pride is not good. People don't want to be around someone if your pride is shining so bright and putting them in the dark. Come on. People of God, when you are stuck in pride, you get stuck by yourself. We must be proud of our church, proud of our family, proud of our unity and spiritual growth here. But we must use it to encourage people and not use the pride to beat them in their heads spiritually. If you don't come to our church, God is not at your church. And so we beat them over the head with pride. Many of us here, we are so spiritually proud that we are of no earthly use. We have to understand. We must be, some of us are so proud that we put the pastor on the pedestal. We put the church building on the pedestal. We put what we do on the pedestal when it should be God. 
on the pedestal. He is the one that needs to be exalted on high. Don't let pride stop us from fixing any problem we have in church, in our family, in our lives, no matter what it is. Because pride will leave us by ourselves, lonely. Philippians 2 verse 3. Listen to this. Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit through factual motives or strife. But when an attitude of humility, being neither arrogant nor self-righteous, regard others as what? Read that, read that last line. Regard others as what? Yes. Others are more important than yourself. Many of us don't even understand and realize how pride can get us stuck. So my last example will, should shake you up and let you know what is happening. I will be talking about the devil. Oh yeah, ooh, scary devil. His name before was Lucifer, son of the morning. And the Bible says he was created with great beauty and majesty. He was given instruments. He was an angel of authority. There's a ranking in heaven. Some of you need to start studying that. And so he was a high-ranking angel. Lucifer. The Bible said he was a beauty to behold, to look upon, because God designed him. Wow! Lucifer. But pride <laughs> made him fall from heaven. And now, what is he known as? The devil, Satan, the liar. Nobody says Lucifer anymore. He got stuck in his pride and lost everything. And now, he and his followers are known as demons. Come on. Take the advice from me this morning. Don't follow Satan. Don't get stuck in pride because you can get stuck in pride and you can quickly fall to humility. Learn from his mistake. In conclusion, when we as Christians get stuck in our lives, we are no use to God. We stop growing spiritually and we don't get anything accomplished for God, period. We become an obstacle instead of aid in the work of God. If you are here today and you are stuck in your life for whatever reason, it is time to get unstuck and start moving again for God. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Eternal God, we are so thankful for your word that can speak directly to us. There are so many things happening in and around us. Some people, dear God, are stuck in the hurt. Someone did something to them 10, 15 years ago. And they're still remembering it. I pray, dear God, that when they remember it, they might remember it with a smile on their face because they have now moved past that hurt and they're not living in hurt anymore. I pray, dear God, that you might allow people not to get stuck in change. In a time like this, where the earth is moving in so many different directions, we have to change our different approach to reach people with the gospel of Jesus. It cannot be only in these walls that we tell people about God. So I pray that we might let go of our old ways and let you initiate change through us. And finally, dear God, we pray, dear God, for us that we might understand that pride is a killer. Pride will make us think we are up there and then eventually we'll fall flat on our face. 
help us as a church to grow spiritually. And when we grow spiritually, then our numbers will grow physically. We thank you for this word. We thank you for allowing us to be able to study and preach your word freely here, as you taught us to say, Our Father. Amen. Thank you for allowing me to speak this morning. Amen. At this time, we're going to have the collection of the morning's offering, and we'll ask those who are responsible for collecting to come at this time. This time I'll ask everyone to stand with me, please, as we have our offertory response. Let us pray. Amen. God, we give you thanks for this offering. We are thankful for all those who had to give. Help us to be good users of what you have blessed us with. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you, guys. I love it that we can laugh at ourselves in church. <laughs> Amen. All right, at this time we're going to have the singing of our closing hymn, Open My Eyes That I May See.
Amen. I love that one. I didn't know it, but I had to just learn it a while ago. It was yes, great. You were singing in your heart. Yes, I was. <laughs> May the grace of our Lord and Savior watch over us. May He cause His face to shine upon us and give us peace this blessed day. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen.